Good afternoon class. Today what we're going to be looking at are volumes of prisms and cylinders. So the first thing we need to look at isn't the shapes themselves. Prisms and cylinders we should be pretty comfortable with. With this word volume. Volume of a solid is the number of cubic units contained within its interior. Basically, it's how much stuff a shape can contain. So if I'm looking at like a prism like this one here, how much stuff it can contain is its volume. So what I'm actually looking at its volume is how much rice can this shape actually hold? The amount of rice it can hold is its volume. It's the number of cubic units that is contained within. Now, same thing with this, a cylinder. The amount of volume it has is the amount of cubic units that I can contain within it. So it's kind of like how much rice, how much stuff can I put inside of it? That's volume. And what we found is, first of all, the volume of a cube is the cube of it the length of its side. Huh? Oh, that's side times side times side. So whatever the side length is, I cube it times by itself three times. And I'll get the volume of the cube. Another thing, if I know two polyhedra are the same size or congruent, they have to have the same volume. And the last thing is, if I had a shape that was kind of weird, let's just say maybe this one here, like this. If I took the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cone, that's the volume of the shape here. So, the volume can be the sum of the volumes of its non-overlapping parts. So if I took the volume of the cone, took the volume of the cylinder, they don't overlap. So if I added those two volumes together, I get the total. Those are all postulates. I can't explain why any of them happen. But we assume they are true. They make sense to us up here. We allow them to be true, and we accept them to be true without proof. So, volume is the number of units contained within. The volume of a cube is the side times side times side of a cube. And if two polyhedra are congruent, they have to have the same volume. And if I have shapes that are a little bit hard to find the volume, I can split it into easier shapes and add those separate volumes together. So, in this case, we now know what volume is. Let's try and calculate it. So what I see is this kind of complicated shape up here. Mm. When I look at it, it says, first of all, find the volume of the puzzle piece in cubic units. So when I look at this, I'm trying to find the volume of this puzzle piece. I'm told that a unit cube is one by one by one. And what I see is that they're telling me it's two units deep, two units tall, one unit width wide here, and it looks like it drops down one unit, four units wide, one unit tall, two units wide, two units down, and it's seven all the way along the bottom. And at each of these spots, it's two units deep. So one way to do this is I could just take a whole bunch of cubes and count them up. Or I could cut this into parts that I know how to find the volume of. But basically, the volume here is going to be the individual cubes added up. So when I look at this, I split it into these four shapes. Now this here, if it's two by two by two, what that means is the front surface here I could cut into four parts. It also kind of means that I cut the side over here into four parts. So basically what I see is four sets of front cubes, four for the front and front half, and then there's going to be four more in the back half because this pattern will also be on the back. So in here I count eight cubic units. Here, if I look, it's one tall, so I cut this into four lengthwise, and it cuts into two this way. So if I look at the top view, what I'm seeing is I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's only one layer vertically. So I still again count eight units cubed. Here, if I look at a side view, two by two, so one, two, three, four, and it's one deep. So I see four cubes and only one deep. So again, this is a uh, four units cubed. Now, the way to find the volume of these rectangular prisms was length times width times height. Two times two times two is eight. Four times two times one, eight. One times two times two, four. Now the volume here ends up being 20 cubic units. So there's a few ways you could have done this. First, you break it up into this and you say, I don't know how to find the volume of a cube. Or of a prism. 
Another way is to kind of visualize it and say, all right, I see how this is four in the front row, four in the back, so there's eight total. This is two layers of four on top of each other. This is one layer of four vertically stacked. All right, it's a little bit hard to see, um, but that's volume, and that's how you might be able to calculate it without um, the formula. However, here's the awesome thing with the volume of the prism. If I want to find the volume of the prism, it's actually as straightforward as this. Whatever the base area is, whatever the base area is, it doesn't matter what it is. If I multiply by the height, I will get the volume of the prism. What? So the volume of a prism is equal to base area times height. Yeah, that's true. So if I had a triangular prism here, like this one here, like that one there, if I knew the area of its base, all I'd have to do is find the area of that base and multiply by the height, and I've got my volume. Remember, the height is always the distance between the bases, so height doesn't always have to be standing straight up. It could be going this way. Because here's the base, here's the other base. So, the height times the base. Look, there's no regular prism. There's no right prism. This is for any prism. If I know the base area and I know the height, I multiply the two, I'll get the volume. What that means is these two actually have the same height. But one's oblique, one isn't. When I stand one upright, it kind of goes to the side like this. And the other upright is like this. But they are the same height. And they have the same base area. These two end up having the same volume. Because base times height, it's base area times the height of the prism. Now, the weird thing, this volume equation doesn't just work for prisms. It also works for cylinders. So if it's like this shape here, this cylinder. If I know the base area and I know the height, well then I know the volume. So volume equals base area times the height. Well, the base of a cylinder is always a circle. So the volume there is pi r squared h. Because the area of a circle is pi r squared. And there's a principle that I kind of said to you. If I know the base area and I know the height of the shape, they have to have the same volume. If two solids have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, then they have the same volume. So basically, if they have the same area, no matter where I cut it, and they are the same height, they have to have the same volume because it's just base area times height for something with two bases. All right, so we know how to find the volume of a prism. We know how to find the volume of a cylinder. I'd probably use this equation instead though. So let's do a few examples. The first one, find the volume of the solid. Alright, so I look at these two shapes. We're going to deal with the one on the left first. Now the volume equation is base area times the height. If I look here, I know the height is this one here because this trapezoid up here and this trapezoid down here are connected by quadrilaterals. So those two are the bases. They also should be parallel to each other. So, when I look at this, um, the height is 5 centimeters. But now I need to find the base area. And the area of my base is the area of the trapezoid. And the area of a trapezoid equation is 1 half height times base 1 plus base 2. Lowercase b's because they're lengths. So, area equals 1 half the height of my trapezoid. Now, the height of my trapezoid ends up being 3 here. The first base, it doesn't matter which one I choose, but it's either 6 or 14. And the other base is the other one. The area of my shape is 1 half times 3 times 20. Or the base area is 30 centimeters squared. So if I'm looking for volume, which I am, I don't particularly care about the area. I don't particularly care about the height because that's not my final result. 
What I want is the volume. I had to find both to be able to solve for it, but now that I have both, I just plug into my equation. Volume equals base 30 times height 5, and I solve. The volume of this shape is 150 centimeters cubed. So as long as I can find the base area, and I know the height or I can find it, I plug it into my volume equation, I'm done. Same thing over here with the cylinder. I know how to find the volume of the cylinder. It's that equation. It's V equals pi R squared H. Wait, R is 9, H is 6? This one's a little bit more straightforward. I don't have to find the base area if I don't want to, because this equation just allows me to plug R and H in. If I forget this equation, yeah, I'm going to have to find the area of the circle and multiply by the height. But if I remember the equation, it's just straightforward. Plug it in. V equals pi r squared, which is 9, squared, times h, which is 6. V equals pi times 81 times 6. V equals 486 pi, or, um, actually I'm going to leave it that way, 486 pi feet cubed. If you want to punch in a calculator, you should get something real close to 1,500. All right, and that's it. That's how you find the volume of a solid. You take the base area, you multiply by the height. Now, I might not just ask you straightforward like this. I might ask it a different shape. Find the volume of the oblique cylinder. I have a volume of a cylinder equation, and I have a volume of a prism equation. But I, wait, wait, wait. I have a volume of a cylinder equation? Does it matter if it's oblique? No, it really doesn't. As long as I know the radius and the height, I should be able to find it. So the radius here is 4 centimeters. And the height is 7 centimeters, because that's the distance between the bases. Wait, so to find volume, all I have to do is pi r squared, which is 4 squared, times the height 7. Yeah, that's it. So plug it in. V equals 16 times 7. 16 times 7 is 112 pi units are centimeters cubed. There I go. I found the volume. Yeah, it's this straightforward. If you know what your values are and you know the equation, sometimes it's as simple as plugging it in and solve. What if I make it a little bit more difficult? What if I had a wall that is 20 feet by 10 feet thick, or sorry, wide, and then it's also half a foot thick? If a 4 by 4 foot window is cut into the wall, not the way, what is the volume of the wall? So let's try and draw this picture. What I have is essentially a rectangular prism. That's 20 feet by 10 feet and half a foot thick. Now, in that surface, what I have done is I've literally cut a window, 4 foot by 4 foot. So in here, I've done 4 foot by 4 foot cut. And it's still that half foot thick. And technically, I'm not able to see this side, this side, this side, and it's 4 foot by 4 foot. And still half a foot thick. Wait, I'm looking for what's the volume of the wall, how much material is in that wall. Wait, so if I could find this big base area, all I have to do is multiply by the height and I'm good to go. So what I'm going to say here is that the height of my wall is 0 0.5 feet. Now, I'm looking for the base area, so that way I can plug it into my equation, volume equals base area times height. Well, the base area is just the front area, because I've said 0.5 is the height. So let's get rid of anything that makes it three-dimensional. I'm going to look at it as two-dimensional. So what I need is the base area. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this. This is all stuff that makes it three-dimensional. And all I'm looking at is now the two-dimensional wall that I want. What I want is this area. Oh, so the area of the large rectangle 
is base times height 20 times 10 or 200 feet squared. The area of the small rectangle is 4 times 4 or 16 feet squared. And the area I'm looking for, so the base area, is the big area minus the small area. 1, 8, 4 feet squared. So I have my base area. I have my height. And at this point, all I need to do to find the volume is take that base area I just calculated. The height that I found or was told. And plug it into my equation. So the volume of this wall is 184 feet squared times 0 0.5 feet, which this would end up being 92 feet. And there we go. I have found the volume of the wall. Did it matter that there was a volume cut out of it? Well, yeah, it did. I had to, first of all, find that base area without that area that was cut out. And I could do this problem. Um, that's pretty much it for volume. Uh, that's all I have for today. Till next time.